Welcome to Drunk 3PO. This is Jay. I'm your host, and I just want to do a timeline here about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I'm actually looking forward to going to Galaxy's Edge when it opens here in Orlando at the end of August. So after doing all these videos, I just want to start from the beginning, put all the information I had together, throw it out there, and you guys just tell me what you think. So remember when it first was getting teased? They're going to build this Star Wars land. I remember peeking my head over the fence over there in Orlando and personally getting excited, man. This was a dream. I always wanted to go to a Star Wars theme park where I could pilot the Millennium Falcon, uh, go and make a custom lightsaber. And so the day was finally here for Disneyland to open their Galaxy's Edge. And good old Bob had a grand opening. He brought out all the old stars from the original trilogy, you know, to stand in front of the Falcon. They had fireworks, they all talked about it. And we were excited. I was excited to see what it was gonna be about. There wasn't too many details. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. And so when this happened, it's like, all right, finally, something I am excited for about Star Wars and then it opened and something weird started happening news reports started reporting that Galaxy's Edge is nothing more than a ghost town <laughs> not only Galaxy's Edge but this is for all of Disneyland itself it just became a ghost town I mean even pictures began popping up and Twitter began talking about it and I even started getting comments in my video sections that talks about their displeasure with Galaxy's Edge. This person writes at the park right now just came out of Galaxy's Edge and have no plans to go back. The ride broke down halfway through. Also said the section of the park is not impressive it's just like a weird farmers market. Nothing to do but buy stuff with new characters that you don't know or care for. Star Tours is still 100% better. Don't waste your money or time. Interesting. Speaking about money. Many of the comments that I'm receiving is that one of the reasons why this park is empty, why Disneyland is empty, why Galaxy's Edge is empty is about money. If you didn't know, the ticket prices were raised not once, not twice, but three times in a year's time which is keeping people away because they just simply can't afford to go. Look at this article here. According to this report in Reader's Digest, Disney has increased their ticket sale prices not because they had to, but because they want to, and they want to attract wealthier people. Their thought process is if they bring in more wealthier people, wealthier people will spend more money within the park. The article goes on to say they priced out middle class family. So this is another reason why the park could be empty is that people just can't afford these prices and Disney is targeting the 1% or the top percent, you know, of, of economic standards to come to their park. Very interesting. So after all these news articles broke, Disneyland then offered a discount uh, over the summer. A, a special ticket, I guess it's called a bring a friend ticket. I'm not too familiar with it. I did ask some of my subscribers to, to give me an explanation on what this discount was and then that would bring people back into the park to fill it out for the summer, to just pack it out over the summer. Was this the discount? that everyone was waiting for. This person basically writes that, yeah, you still have the blackout dates and to offer an annual pass holder a single day ticket that's discounted, well, what's the point of that? Why would you, anyone spend hundreds of dollars on an annual pass to shell out more money to go over the summer? It doesn't make sense. Um, this person said, I'm taking my money to either Universal Studios or Magic Mountain that provides cheaper and better quality entertainment. Interesting. This person states season passes are $399 to, gosh, $1,149 with blackouts. And 
1300 almost $1,400 without blackouts, and they want you to pay an extra 99 extra to bypass the blackout on the cheaper passes. Looks like a lot to me. And I bet Disneyland didn't expect this. The Toontown Brawl, which the uh, Disneyland security, <laughs> I don't know if they were exposed or people already knew this, uh, it took them almost two minutes to uh, to get there to kind of simmer down this this family enjoying a day at Disneyland. And I bet good old Bob Iger didn't expect this one either, that Abigail Disney visited Disneyland undercover after worker complaints. Now, in her story, she was shocked at Disneyland and how the park was set up and that she claims that workers were eating out of the trash because they couldn't afford food. Now, Disney has come back out and said that this story was nothing more than a stunt to kind of get her back in, in the limelight, I guess. And then on top of all that, their mainstream ride, the ride that was supposedly their, their Grand Slam knockout home run ride is being delayed all the way till January. People have been talking about the Millennium Falcon ride saying, eh, it's so-so. It ain't the greatest, but this was supposed to be the ride. They're having disputes with the company. You know, hopefully they get that worked out so this ride will, will be everything that they, they say it was going to be. And remember all the employees and the people that they were going to hire for Galaxy's Edge. And here's a, here's a shot here of, of all the new hires that they had for Disney's Galaxy's Edge here in California. And this article and others came out that said Disneyland implements a hiring freeze and cutbacks. They did this because of the low summer attendance. Now there's a little update here that you see updated on July 10th. And they got a little more information from Disney. And I'll put the update here. Basically, the update saying is, well, like any business, we're adjusting our hiring needs during the course of the year to match our business needs. Um, so that's what they came out and said about the hiring freeze and the cutbacks in hours. With all that being said and with all that that was going on, it just was a really rough opening for Disney Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And reading all the comments, and and I'm thankful that everyone took the time to send me information that have been. Again, I've never been. I'm actually waiting for the opening here in Orlando in August. And I'll go see it myself. The big majority of it all saying that this park was definitely built for the sequel trilogy fans. And they threw in the Millennium Falcon just for a little nostalgia. Uh, the face that George is making here is priceless, but all those things wrapped up probably had a big reason why Galaxy's Edge and Disneyland had, were just experiencing some issues and troubles and, and different things, uh, probably with the people not going. The, the pricing was probably the biggest reason. I mean, listen, man, we work hard for our money. We don't want to spend thousands of dollars to go to some place that's not even open. Galaxy's Edge only has a fraction open of what it should be open now the one in orlando which i will be attending will have the same issues the one the main ride won't be opening till later this year but the one in orlando will also have a hotel with some other restaurants and some other bars and things that you can do and i hope to have a full report so this was it this was just kind of a wrap up wrapping up my galaxy's edge videos uh, and just kind of throwing out the opening that they had there <laughs> from from around July 4th. So with all that considered, pricing, the blackout dates for pa pass holders and for cast members, um, and just some of the bad media that's been going around probably all added to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. But again, I mean, what do you think? Again, some of you all have been there. Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Many people are saying it's just a big mall. It's just like a flea market. Many people are saying they had a great time. And I think that's awesome, man. If you have a great time, you spend your money, you have a great time, that's what it's all about. Go out and have a great time. That's what life is all about. That's what life is all about. 
And this wasn't a video hating on Galaxy's Edge and being that it might come across. You might think it's coming across that way. I'm just reporting the news and the facts and the things that are going on and trying to put everything together in this video as to why why I think they were having uh, some issues there at the opening of Galaxy's Edge. Right now, more pictures are coming out in video of people saying that, yeah, it's, it's getting a little crowded. It's not the summer crowds that they were hoping for, but there's people definitely here. And I'm sure we'll see more reports as it go on. When the new ride opens up, that might even uh, you know, bring in more people to say how awesome this is. In my own personal opinion, I would have loved if they had done some things from the movies that we recognize. You know, either make a Tatooine, a Coruscant, whatever, uh, Jabba's Palace. And no matter what, this, this is Star Wars. Star Wars should be for everyone. And they shouldn't just push out certain sections and they shouldn't push out certain things. They shouldn't push out. Um, they should just have it all there. So older generations and younger generations and mid-age generations, we could all just celebrate Star Wars together. And that's the Star Wars that we love. People that want to see Luke should see Luke, should see Dagobah. People that loved Anakin and Coruscant and all those things in the prequels should be able to go see those things. People that love these new movies, you know, with Kylo Ren and Rey and Finn, they should be able to see those things. We should all just go and enjoy Star Wars together. And that's my hope. That's my hope. And here's to hope. I want to thank everyone who's watched all my Galaxy's Edge videos and and just kind of hung around and gave me your thoughts and opinions. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. And uh, the next one will be, unless something crazy happens, unless something crazy happens, I'm looking forward to going next month in August around my birthday. Thank you guys so much. This is Jay, and I'll catch you next time.